Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mr. Cold. Today I am bringing you the Mystery River Monk 10.0 guide for PvP. Sorry for the long wait. I have been recovering from COVID. Still have it. So hopefully I don't sound too sick. But yeah, this video is going to be one of the longer ones. Just a guide going over talents, play style, defensives, everything you need to know to play Mistweaver in PvP. And with that said, let's jump right into it. One question I'd like to answer before I start the rest of the video is why you should play Miss Weaver in the first place. I get the, I get asked why I even play Miss Weaver, especially when we're not doing the best. And it's really simple. I just like a class or spec that's really fun to play. I thoroughly enjoy how much healing I help Miss Weaver has and the mobility. I think the mobility is top notch, probably still one of the best in the game. And I love Ring of Peace and I love Transcendence. Those spells are my two favorite spells in the game. As long as Miss Weaver has those spells, I will be I will be playing it. And there's just no healing play style like it. I, I enjoy it. I know people can complain that I cast a little too much. I, I just love it. I love that I can move around the map whenever I really want to. Um, it, it's just my favorite thing in the game and that's why I play it this whole time you also have options of fist weave which is nice I'll probably make a separate video about fist weaving but you can fist weave it I really like it. I use it in PvE which uh, I, I enjoy as well and overall I just think Miss Weaver if you want to play a healer where you're you know pretty high skill cap when it comes to defensives and kiting and running Play play Miss Weaver if you really like high healing output and high mobility. I would recommend playing Miss Weaver because we have all that. By far one of the most common questions I get, and that is what race you should be playing. If you don't know, in Dragonflight, everybody got a two set bonus from your when you use two PvP trinkets, and what that does is it gives you intellect, stamina, and reduces CC on you by ten percent. And then also you can buy crafted items to make it five percent more, so fifteen percent total. This is kind of to negate the orc uh, stun ratio. So pretty much every race is viable. However, there are some that are better than others. In my opinion, the best race is night elf. I think that night elf with shadow it gives you so many different options, so many different things you could do. Miss Weavers also just re this past like two or three days, we got a 10% mana nerf. So we're probably going to need to go for drinks a bit more than what we're used to in the past expansion and now. So I think Night Elf is the best race. So it's racial. It's good for Shadow Meld drink, Shadow Meld mount up if you're in an RBGs. Um, really high skill cap when you, you know, if you Shadow Meld when someone tries to CC you. Just really useful. Now, if you don't want to play Night Elf or you don't want to play Alliance, which is fine. Um, for the orc side, for the orc side, for the horde side, orc is still good. You still get the um, blood fury, I believe it's called, and then you also get the sun reduction, which is great. Undead also solid versus warlocks and shadow priests. So I think those two are the best races on the uh, uh, horde side. And, oh, and I forgot to mention on the alliance side, human or dark iron dwarf slash dwarf is another alternative to night elf. You don't have to be night elf. I just think it's the best. But you can play human because they get a stun break. So that's nice. You can just play double trinket instead of like one medallion. You can play emblem, insignia or something like that, and, and which I can talk about later. Uh, you also get more stats, which is pretty cool. So human is really good. Um, Dark Iron Dwarf, really solid for dispelling versus Shadow Priests, Assassination Rogues, Feral Druids. In my experience, they don't really target you. So if you get some value out of it, but you don't get as much value as if you were getting like trained by them so i would say overall alliance side you want night elf human dark iron dwarf and then for the horde side you're going to be orc or undead all right so you picked your race you level up to 70 probably as windwalker and you're swapping the misweaver and you want to know what stats you want i would say for arena what your stats are going to want to be are verse mastery haste crit so I'm here at the PvP vendor. I, I don't normally do guides here, but this this place has everything. So we're just gonna we're just gonna do our guide from here. You're gonna go to this vendor right here for honor gear. You're gonna look for anything with verse mastery. So I don't think chest has hate verse mastery. You're gonna you actually I'll talk about chest in a little bit, but I'm just gonna say in general right now, you're gonna want verse mastery, haste crit. Try to get anything with verse mastery on it. Like I, there's uh, gloves with verse mastery. There's Helms with Verse Mastery. Now, there are going to be pieces that don't have Verse Mastery on it. And usually you just go Haste. However, they added this um, vendor over here with Bloody Tokens. And what they have is they have Verse Mastery gear on a like your belt that you don't normally have. Your uh, chest, which you, they don't normally have. And your wrists. So, you have three pieces right there. I can show you what they look like. 
This is what I have right here. And it's mostly verse mastery. Haste, haste verse on my shoulders, verse mastery. And then on my chest, I, I get use the uh, bloody coins from this guy. They're from World PvP or Supply Chest, whichever one uh, you could do. And you could buy the verse mastery chest and wrist. And for some reason, I use the gloves, and I don't know why. I I don't. I would swear on my life that I have first mastery gloves, and uh, I don't have them, and it's kind of weird. So I I would go with the verse mastery gloves from the normal vendor, and then verse mastery. I got I bought this one. You could upgrade it one pretty much every week, and so I got the belt. And so yeah, it's verse mastery haste crit uh, for trinkets. I tend to run insignia and medallion nothing you could play emblem there but the reason you played emblem before was because it made life cocoon bigger but we have this talent now which i'll talk about later but it makes life cocoon stronger so not really a huge use for it. it's a pretty solid defensive though so i just don't i just i don't get targeted that often so you i would just go with insignia just because haste is really nice Alrighty, we are moving right along here, and these are my talents. I will have an import to them in the description below. I will talk about both sides, though. On the monk side, it's pretty standard. There's really nothing too crazy. I will say that these four points down here are flex talents. These are probably the weirdest ones here, where it's a brewmaster talents. So the avoidance, I don't think even matters, but the bounce back, I think, is pretty good. Um, when you get hit for damage more than 20% of your max health, it reduces damage you take by 20% for 4 seconds. This can happen once every 30 seconds. It That's a 20% wall for 4 seconds every 30 seconds. I think that's good. I think there's, pretty, there's a decent amount of hard-hitting abilities in the game right now. So I take that. However, you can kind of do whatever you want with these 4 points. So I'll, I'll talk about the tree and then we'll talk about what 4 points you can do. Um... The, again, standard Rising Sun Kick, Tiger's Lust. There's nothing really. I don't take I don't take slow because it costs too many globals to use and, and to refresh it. And I'm not really even in the fight that often. So I, I just don't go for slow. I do go for kick though. Fort Brew, obviously, with the um, cooldown reduction on it. Uh, I really like Expel Harm, so I tend to go Strength of Spirit with uh, Vigorous Expulsion. You could go Profound Rebuttal, but then it's kind of awkward. I, I don't go Chi Wave just because I think it's kind of like it breaks CC. It doesn't do enough damage, definitely doesn't do enough healing, so there's just no point in using it. Um, you could go Elusive Mist, though, if you wanted to. So, I would say, in general, I, I'm trying to see, you could go Elusive Mist to take damage reduction, go for a Profound Rebuttal, and then go for, like, a Dampen Harm, if that's what you'd like. So, that's that's one thing you could do with these Monk Talents, if you want the extra Dampen Harm. Dampen Harm's pretty good. I just don't have a Keybind for it. <laughs> So I don't normally take it, but yeah, you could, this this is a pretty solid tree right here. If you just want to maximize your expel harm healing, uh, your cool, your damage reduction, and you get an extra defensive, which is nice. Uh, you could also run the, uh, the 30 second wall, but I'm actually kind of liking this build a lot more. So uh, I would go with this. This seems pretty solid. You And then you could opt for either extra healing from expel harm or chi wave. It's up to you. I don't really like chi wave though. For the Mistweaver side, again, I've been tinkering around with these talents for uh, quite a bit now uh, on, between beta, pre-patch, and live now. I've done, I don't even know, close to, I don't know how many games, 65 solo shuffles, you know, a little over 100 games. And this is kind of what I've ended up on. It, it There's really not much wiggle room because half the talents are for fist weaving as well, so or, or for raiding. So I kind of start with getting Enveloping Mist, going straight to getting our Life Cocoon, come down here and get you know get your two charges of Renewing Mist. And from there, you, you're going to want Revival. A Song of Chi-Gi, at first, I didn't think there was much use for it. However, this is really good to have. Just having the option to Song something when your teammate can't get Crack Control is really nice. Uh, get your Healing Elixirs. These all buff your Life Cocoon, which is great. So this makes it so Life Cocoon puts Renewing Mist and Enveloping Mist on the target. This increases the healing you do once life cocoon is down, and then common coalescence. Every time you heal with soothing mist, you get a stack, um, and each stack increases the absorption shield of life cocoon by three percent, up to fifty. So it's just amazing. The shield it literally absorbs like six hundred thousand. It's it's absurd. Um, so I'm just trying to think. Overflowing mist is just insane. Start Yulon and all this. So you come down here, and then these final three rows are kind of where you can change things up a bit. But it doesn't change much. <laughs> like it, it really doesn't matter. Um, 
Focus Thunder, you want that second charge of Thunder Focus T. And then Peaceful Mending is crazy good. So this makes it so when you're soothing missing something, they take 30% more healing from your enveloping mist or renewing mist. So that's just crazy. So just make, I mean, it's not like we have a choice when it comes to healing, but just, I guess, just make sure you're channeling your soothing mist and enveloping mist. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's we it's good it's really good and then you out you go for your tier of morning uh obviously you need your cloud focus this is huge and then yeah resplendent mist and many proliferation there's really nothing else to it bone dust brew could be one talent point where you can kind of move things around i've moved this talent around a few times i've moved it to rapid diffusion rapid diffusion is pretty good because when you envelop mist you put a redoing mist on somebody so it kind of frees up your globals a bit you could put it one into Secret Infusion. That one felt pretty good. You could even put one into like Tea of Serenity. Again, really, really good. Just one point to put anywhere you really want. I've been putting it in Rapid Diffusion. Um, you could also put it in Tea of Serenity. Um, they both work. So whichever one you're feeling more comfortable with is fine. I kind of like Bonus Brew just because it's a nice little one minute cooldown that kind of you could you could rotate with your Yulon. So. That's what I've been doing. These are my talents. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any other talents or if you have, you know, different talent tree, please feel free to link it. It's nice, easy to copy, just paste, just copy and paste and then use it. When it comes to PvP talents, we suffer from success. We have a lot of good PvP talents, a lot of good options, and only three slots. So I'll give you my default. This is this is my default PvP talents right here. Zen Focus T, Peace Weaver, Chrysalis, because every team has a kick. Most teams have magic damage and chrysalis because of how good life cocoon is with common coalescence talent. It's just too good to pass up. I switch these depending on what I'm queuing into. So for example, if I'm queuing into a team with a warrior on it or something that needs to be disarmed, if they're pairing with someone that's magic, I will normally drop Zen Focus T for disarm. So that gives me disarm for the warrior, peace weaver for whatever magic teammate they have and then chrysalis because chrysalis is good. If they're playing with another melee, I might even drop peace weaver and you could go eminence if you think they're going to go you or you could go zen focus t in case you think they're going to kick you so something like that really important to just kind of switch with your talents depending on what you're queuing into i can't really think of most of the common comps right now i think double caster is really important shadow priest is insane so versus shadow priest i'll play peace weaver and then whatever they're queuing into so again if they're queuing with a warrior i'll play disarm if they're queuing with a an affliction warlock i will normally play healing sphere just because of how good it is what this does is this will put a sphere on the ground and if somebody runs through it, it dispels everything on them. Boom. Everything's dispelled. It's amazing. Um, and then you could you could drop Zen Focus T. You could drop Chrysalis for Zen Focus T if you want to, if you're afraid of getting kicked. Depends on what you're queuing with. If you're playing with casters, there's a good chance. Yeah, Zen Focus T is good. So I would I would play this for if you're playing against double casters. Uh, it's just really, really just a lot of good healing output, really good utility there. If you're playing against a comp like RMP, normally what, what you want to play is first Eminence because they try normally try to stun you to set up you on you to to polymorph you. You could just use this to port. Peace Weaver really good versus Mage cooldowns, and then this third one can be it can be Zen Focus T so you don't get kicked. It could be Disarm versus the Rogue. It's kind of whatever you are kind of comfortable with. Normally I just go Zen Focus T though. Um, really helpful and whenever you get a chance to get guaranteed healing especially as a mist weaver it doesn't take long to to kind of top somebody from low health uh, i would take it so zen focus is really good and in melee cleaves i did double casters i did general i'm trying to think of any other scenarios where you know melee caster for let's just say you're queuing into thunder which is ellie shaman warrior or you're queuing into you know demon warlock dk Anything like that. Normally, I play Chrysalis, Peace Weaver, and then Zen Focus T versus that. Again, though, if you're playing against Thunder and you're playing against a Warrior, you'll drop Zen Focus T and go for Grapple Weapon. So you can see that the same three or four talents you're replaying. Um, the Niche ones, which is pretty much just Dove of Mist, is the Niche one and Healing Sphere. Uh, Dove of Mist is good versus like double or triple purge. So anytime you queue into double Priest, double Shaman, you know, mage on top of that or something like that. Don't miss is pretty good. Um, I don't think it's it's not bad. I I probably run this. I don't think it's worth dropping Chrysalis for it because Chrysalis is just insane. But yeah, I'd run something like this just because you want to get value out of your envelopy mist. If you do get purged, it feels rough. So anything like that, anything like this, uh, it works. But yeah, those are my PvP talents. Again, you're just kind of rotating the same four or five, but you only have three slots. So you kind of need to choose depending on what you're queuing into. Before I talk about healing rotation, I just want to talk about our healing spells. 
just so you have a good understanding of what each spell does. If you're already comfortable playing Mistweaver, you can feel free to just skip this. I have all the timestamps in the description. But I'll start off with just straight from the top. Expel Harm, really good heal. It's not going to save you somebody, but it is solid for when two people are taking damage or just you are taking damage. So, for example, if you use Expel Harm, you can only use it on yourself, but it's instant. It's decent. Right? It's pretty good. Um, if you're channeling Soothing Mist and use Expel Harm, it heals your target and yourself. So you'll see me quite often use this on a teammate. Let's just say I'm you know, taking some against the Affliction Warlock. We're taking some damage. I'll just you know, use Expel Harm on them and myself. We both get a heal. Really quick heal. It's really nice. Next healing spell, Soothing Mist. Obviously, this is our, this is our <laughs> spell. So for those of you who don't know, Vivify is actually a casted spell same with developing mist you have to cast them but if you use soothing mist and use it with vivify it's instant so this makes our important spells instant however it does technically mean we we are casting most of the game so do keep that in mind juking which is avoiding being kicked is huge for mist weaver that's why it's kind of not so fun to play when you first start playing i did just mention vivify so vivify is our main heal um, what this does is it heals your main target and then something that not a lot of people, you know, that I first started playing knew about was that it also heals people with Renewing Mist on them. So what that means is if I put Renewing Mist on this target and I heal this target with Vivify, this guy gets healed. I enabled the healing spells. So what this means for Vivify is if I put Renewing Mist on this target and I Vivify this target, this target also gets healed, which is really cool because if you put Renewing Mist on somebody... Right, you put a renewing mist on everybody, and then you heal somebody with renewing mist on them. You're also going to be healing them for more because they have renewing mist on them as well, so they get double healed, which is amazing. That's why it's so important to have renewing mist up on everybody as, as much as you can. Um, Enveloping mist, another. This is our it's probably second top heal, where it's a really strong hot, very very strong hot, and it increases the healing that target takes from our spells by forty percent. So. Usually use Enveloping Mist, not too often because you will run out of mana, but you will use it often. It, it's it's hard to say. You will use it often enough where, you know, you're going to heal people and you're going to get that 40% bonus, but you're not going to use it too much where you're going to run out of mana. Essence Font, you're not going to use this too often in Arena, but you will use it. I'll explain why in uh, the healing rotation, but uh, essentially it puts a hot on people that gives, and if you have the hot, you get double mastery, and I'll talk about our mastery, but... They're going to take double mastery. So, boom, you just spam healing. Oh, it's so much healing. I love it. I love Miss Weaver so much. Renewing Mist. Uh, this is our main hot right here that you're going to use. It's instant. You don't need to use it while channeling Soothing Mist. And I mentioned it with Vivify. So, just keep it up. Keep it active. You want, always want to have it recharging. Obviously, with Vivify, um, it, it gets healed for whoever has Vivify or uh, Renewing Mist on them. So, keep that in mind. Revival. Just, an, just a raid-wide cooldown. It's pretty good. It's pretty solid. So that is pretty much it. Oh, and our mastery. So what our mastery is, Renewing Mist, Enveloping Mist, Expel Harm, Revival, and Vivify all give a second heal. So that is really important. And then it has an interaction with Resplendent Mist right here, which makes it so Gustav Mist has a 30% chance to do 100% more healing, which is crazy. So you could just do a ton of mastery healing. And that's why when you have Renewing Mist, you can see two healing spells go out. There's an initial heal that Renewing Mist has, and it, it procs our Mastery. And then you also have a Vivify, which procs Mastery, and our Essence Font, which procs Double Mastery. So Mastery hits twice when you when you have Essence Font hot. And that's when you start to do a lot of healing. But you don't want to use Essence Font too much. as just simple, similar to Enveloping Mist. Uh, they both cost a lot of mana. So you don't want to spam them too often. But those are pretty much our main healing spells. I'm trying to think of anything else. Life Cocoon is another one of our main defensives. Where uh, it's just a big absor big absorption shield that puts Enveloping Mist and Renewing Mist on, on the target. So that's going to be your main, probably one of your last defensives on a teammate. Because you have, you have a lot of healing to do. But yeah, those are our healing spells. Now that you know your healing spells, I just want to help you get a better understanding of what talents are really going to be doing a bulk of your healing. And it's a lot of your healing is going to come from Cloud of Focus and Tear of Mourning. So I'll Cloud of Focus is the main legendary or main legendary that's shallow this wasn't legendary shadow is your main talent so what this does is when you heal with envelop mist or vivify while channeling soothing mist it increases the healing done by 15 percent and reduces their mana cost by 15 percent stacks up to three times 
and then this effect is canceled when you stop channeling Soothing Mist. So what that means is when you use Soothing Mist, right, and use Enveloping Mist, you get a stack of Cloud of Focus, and each stack increases the heal of your next Enveloping Mist and Vivify, and reduces the mana cost. That is it, very, very important. I've had people message me and ask me, how do I not run out of mana? And it's because of Cloud of Focus. You need to get good value out of that talent. Otherwise, you are going to run out of mana very, very quickly. So I just want you to know that before I talk about healing rotation, just get a good, you know, I would truly, I would just go up to a target dummy and start, you know, understanding it. Like what's going on? I'm getting a stack each time I press this. Okay. And, and just try to understand it. So the next part is tier of mourning. This doesn't really have a modifier or anything on it. This, or this doesn't have anything similar to cloud of focus. But what this does is when you cast renewing mist or envelop mist on a target with renewing mist, as a 10% chance to spread. So that Renewing Mist has a chance to spread. This also makes it so your Vivify healing through Renewing Mist is increased by 20%, and your Enveloping Mist also heals allies with a Renewing Mist for 20% of its healing done. So just essentially what that means is keep Renewing Mist on as many people as possible and do your healing rotation on, on your target. And then you also have Peaceful Mending, which makes it so allies targeted by Soothing Mist receive 30% more healing from your Enveloping Mist and Renewing Mist effects. So that's important. And then we have Overflowing Mist, which makes it so your Enveloping Mist heals the target for 2% of their max health each time they take damage. So if you, you know, if your target is taking a lot of damage, you throw an Enveloping Mist on them, they're going to get this. They're going to take 2% of their max health. Um, and so those, those are the two main things, three main things that you just need to keep in mind when you're healing. Um, it's, it's, it's mostly Cloud of Focus that you want to uh, kind of pay attention to. Another important talent, of course, is Thunder Focus T. And what this does is when you use it, it empowers your next spell. For Enveloping Mist, it immediately heals the target. Renewing Mist, the duration of Renewing Mist is uh, increased. Vivify will cost no mana. Rising Sun Kick has a cooldown reduction. And Essence Font Channel is 100% faster. For all intents and purposes, for this, Thunder Focus T is pretty much only used for Vivify and Enveloping Mist. There's other situations where you use maybe Rising Sun Kick or Renewing Mist, but not really so much in Arena. You're going to use it mostly for Enveloping Mist or Renewing Mist, and you have a second charge because you're playing Focus Thunder. So keep that in mind while we're doing a healing rotation. It's very, very important, and I'll explain why uh, once we talk about it. All right, healing rotation. Renewing Mist is, I mentioned before, is your bread and butter heal. You're going to keep it up active on as many people as possible. Throughout in an arena game, you know, if you know you're playing with a warlock or a hunter, put it on their pet as well. Really good for they get the good cleave healing from that, from the vivify. And from here, it really depends on. I mean, just like PvP, it depends on the situation. For the most part, you're gonna you're fine just using vivify, right? Um, if your teammate is 80, 90 percent health, you're fine with just channeling soothing mist. If they take a little damage, throw a little renewing mist on them as long as they have, or throw a little vivify on them with the renewing mist, and they'll be fine. What happens now is someone's going to start taking some damage. And what happens is you, ha you have a few options. Uh, you have a few options here. You could just bonus brew. So bonus brew, again, gives you a chance to get some bonus mastery. It gives you some good healing, which is nice. It does have a travel time, though, so it is kind of annoying. So normally, I'll just throw a bonus brew. And then, again, put Renewing Mist. Hopefully, I get double mastery. I'll try to stay in combat just so we can like, kind of log these healing, log this healing. And then I'll vivify. And that's normally enough healing. What you want to do is you want to start pairing Thunder Focus T once you start get comfortable with your healing rotation. Um, I just explained it, but one trick, and this will help with your mana. It is huge for helping with your mana. Is remember Thunder Focus T reduces the mana cost of Vivify to zero, so Vivify costs no mana, and you get a stack of Cloud of Focus every time you use Vivify. So what that means is if I have my Renewing Mist out and I someone's starting to take some damage, right? Someone's starting to take, like, someone's at, like, 80% health. Now he's going down to 60. You could use your Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus Eve, Vivify, Vivify, cost no mana, and then follow it up with an Enveloping Mist. Because now you have stacks of Cloud of Focus. The Vivify costs no mana, right? Because you use your Thunder Focus T, it has two charges, you get two free charges of Cloud of Focus because your viv two Vivifies cost no mana. And then your Enveloping Mist, the healing is increased by 30% and the ma uh, mana reduction is 30%. So that's huge because Enveloping Mist normally costs a ton of mana, but it doesn't when you have, what, two or three stacks of Cloud of Focus. What, what's the mana cost of it? 6,300. 
Like it's it's so good. It's it's so good. So there you go. You save a ton of mana and you do a ton of healing at the same time, which is what you want to do with Mistweaver. You kind of want to you want to use your Cloud of Focus to cheat some mana, but also do a ton of healing. So that's what I would that that would be my rotation if someone was starting to take damage. You know. 60 70 percent if someone's really starting to take damage what i'll do is i will go for a soothing mist go for a vivify and then thunder focus to vivify enveloping mist because the envelop mist is going to get you're going to do the instant healing that it does um it doesn't matter what you know order you do that in as long as you do the thunder focus team envelop mist because what essentially what you're trying to do again is try to get as many stacks of cloud of focus but also do a ton of healing. So, you know, you could just use your Vivify, Vivify, and then you could just go for a thought. You could even do like Thunder Focus, the Envelope Mist, and then maybe into another Envelope Mist or something like that. But that's normally what I do, just because you get two stacks of Cloud of Focus, one of them is free, and then you get the big healing from Envelope Mist. So that's kind of essentially what the healing is. The healing rotation for Mistweaver is fairly simple compared to other healers, which is nice. You can It kind of helps you focus on other stuff in the arena. Um, but it does take some time to get used to. But you will get used to it. It's it's nothing too crazy. Again, um, one of my first cooldowns is Bonus Brew. And then I'll just throw in, you know, Vivify, Vivify, and then throw in Envelope Mist once you get two stacks. So that's a, that's my healing rotation for... 90 percent of games it's it's really really not too bad if you don't have bone dust brew use yulon again she's a one minute cooldown now um and what she does is you reduce the cooldown on your enveloping mist by 33 percent and then you also if you use this talent you get enveloping breath which puts another hot on them on your teammate which increases the healing that you receive from you so similar to bone dust brew again keep your renewing mist up what you'll do is you'll use yulon Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus T, and then Vivify, Vivify, and Velvet Mist. And then you get this extra hot right here, which increases the healing they receive, in addition to the Enveloping Mist. So that's really good. Really, really good. A um, lot of healing. This, let me tell you, if you have Yulon up, and I know I talk bad about her. I do. I do. I, I think when she, when she was a three-minute cooldown, I hated her. However, one-minute cooldown, very, very strong very powerful use it when you you have to kind of tell the future a little bit here but what you want to do is you want to use it when you feel like damage is coming out um use it right after you leave crowd control or something like that uh so keep that in mind uh that also reminds me uh, we do have instant vivify every 10 seconds instant vivify is good it doesn't unfortunately it does not work with cloud of focus because you need to be channeling soothing mist to get the cloud of focus stacks but it does it is good for a quick heal once you leave crowd control or if someone's out of position you get a quick heal and then you could start healing again um but yeah i'd say that's pretty much the healing rotation there's really nothing else to it if you have any questions about rotation let me know it's mostly really coming down to managing those cloud of focus stacks using your thunder focus t for the two free vivifies to get two free stacks of cloud of focus and then using that last one for enveloping mist, and that's that's your burst healing right there. And again, always keeping your mist up, and uh, you know using your instant enveloping mist, and you're you're good. I mean, that's that's pretty much the healing, which is nice. I didn't forget that we were going to talk about essence font. So there is a very niche situation where you're going to want to use essence font, and that is when you want to get some instant healing out. Because remember, we mistweavers have gust of mist, which is our mastery, which procs procs it gets it's done when you use renewing mist expel harm vivify enveloping mist so essence font gives you double mastery so what you're going to want to do is if you're if you're the one being targeted what you'll do is you could use bonus brew but i'll, I'll just use essence font what you'll do i'll show i'll show you how much healing this does i'll get in combat so what you're going to do is you're going to essence font expel harm renewing mist renewing mist Vivify. All of that healing, I would love to see how much healing that did because all of that healing is instant, almost 100k, 100%. Look, this is our mastery. And on top of that, if you can get a quick involvement, this would be insane. It's even stronger if you use Bone Dust Brew. So if you're really in a panic and you're going to Bone Dust Brew, you could Essence Font. Let me get in comment again. Bone Dust Brew, Expel Harm, Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, Vivify. And you could see, look at this, 229,000 instant healing. I did my entire health pool in instant healing because Essence Font gives us double mastery, bonus brew, 
can proc our mastery so it's just an insane amount of healing you could also use this when your teammates are in trouble and there's multiple kicks available what i will tend to do is i will quickly just go for an essence font cancel it and then i'll do a renewing mist renewing mist go for an instant vivify and then from there i'll probably try to do like a you know big heal but it's i only use it in like desperate needs you know this isn't something i'm doing constantly during an arena match or even every arena arena match you're you're using it when you're desperate but yeah, that is when I use Essence Font. It's really good instant healing. Very, I mostly use it when I'm in, I'm in trouble because you get the bonus from like Expel Harm, right? Expel Harm is instant on yourself. So it does a little 34k heal. Can proc the mastery as well. The hardest part about Mistweaver is your defensives, your rotation of them, and your kiting. This unfortunately is the most frustrating part about Mistweaver because we have so much healing output. We have so much mobility. But if you can't rotate your cooldowns, position in the right spot, you are going to die. You you will die. It doesn't matter how much mobility you have. If you get caught, you're done for. So I'm going to try. This is going to be a pretty important section, uh, maybe one of the longest sections. So I'll kind of go over defensives. And I'll tell you how to rotate them. It's not easy. It does take practice. I promise it's worth it. So one defensive we have is Dampen Harm. What this does, it reduces all damage take, you take by 20% to 50%. Uh, with longer attacks being reduced by more kind of a useless ability it's not useless because you take damage reduction but it's not very good versus teams with a lot of little it like it's really annoying versus assassination rogues because that you don't really die from one big hit you die from like paper cuts it's really annoying but if you're queuing into a death warlock really solid anything you know arms warriors tend to have pretty big um you know damage so it's really good versus uh you know specs like that um one of my first ones to rotate just because it's it's it just depends on what I'm queuing into, but I really like Diffuse Magic and, and Healing Elixirs more. Uh, Fort Brew, four minute, six minute cooldown, four minute cooldown with the talent. What this does is increase your health by 15% and reduce all damage take by 20%. This is your four minute cooldown. This is one of my first cooldowns I use, mostly because it has a long cooldown and I really like it. it increases the health, you know, your health. So you get a bump in health, which is great and reduces your, the damage you take. So really really good really handy four minute cooldown is a little bit ex excessive you know it's it's it, it is what it is but i guess they put it in the monk tree so brewmasters have access to it so maybe it's like a pve thing uh i'm not a fan of how long the cooldown is but that's okay I, is that it from the monk over here so miss weaver no there should be diffuse magic in here as well yep diffuse magic what this does is this reduces magic damage you take by 60 percent and transfers all current harmful magical effects back to the original caster i have another section later in the video called tips and tricks i'll show you something you could cool with this but essentially what you want to do is you want to use this when you are being targeted from magic spells essentially so Really good for pretty much anything with magic damage. Even, you know, Frost Death Knights have a lot of magic damage. Or Rep Pallies have magic damage. So not just casters, but also some melee that have magic damage. Uh, what else? We have our, you know, Life Cocoon. Another pretty big defensive Life Cocoon. We also have Zen Focus T, which is, makes, immune, makes us immune to, you know, silence and interrupt effects. One very key part to our defensives is our mobility. Okay, so keep that in mind. We have Chi Torpedo. And we have transcendence right here, which are which is our port. So those are our defensives. Um, oh, peace weaver slash revival. So what this does, this is our PvP talent we talked about earlier. Peace weaver makes it so your your revival's cooldown is reduced by fifty percent and provides your immunity to all magical effects, magical damage, and harmful effects for two seconds. Lot there are endless endless possibilities for this talent and this spell. So keep that in mind. It's very fun. You can do my favorite thing to do is to immune the hunt. I've gotten whispers uh, from demon hunters asking, yo, how did you, how the hell did you immune the hunt there? And I said, I would just link in the talent. What you do with the hunt is you, and I'll, t again, I have a tips and tricks section. What you could do is when the demon hunter is midair, revival with Peace Weaver. It immunes the damage, immunes the dot. No, it does takes no damage. So really, the again, a lot of cool things you can do with Miss Weaver. A lot of ways you can outplay people. It's so much fun. Uh, but those are our main defensives. So I just want to talk about you know what our defensive are, and then I'll talk about our rotation. As usual, it does depend on the situation. But I kind of want to talk about our defensive rotation now. If you're being targeted, your first your first cooldown is always port. There's no reason for you not to press. And then on top of that. We have escape from reality here. You could port again if they get back to you. 
and then just go across the map. Port is your first cooldown, your first line of defense because one, it has a short cooldown, and two, it makes you you you're safe. You're instantly safe. You're not in the middle of the map. You're behind a pillar, and when you're behind a pillar, you can do some pretty fun stuff. You could uh, you could drop so they can't get to you. One little trick with rop, with rop, try not to rop on top of yourself. It does not help. What you want to do is you want to get to a pillar. You want to put it on a corner, make the pillar bigger. And then what you could do is you could roll to the next pillar or you could Tiger's Lust, you know. And while you're doing all this, you could heal on the move, right? You you know that your Renewing Mist is instant. Your Expel Harm is instant. You have a free Vivify. And you could keep healing on the move here while you're running around the pillar. So keep that in mind. Don't waste any time. Use your globals when you can. Now, if you don't have port, you you, you got some options. You, you do have options. Um, again, assuming they're training you, which can assume you're getting trained down. I would first start off with Zen Focus T. I don't have it on my bar because I need to uh, <laughs> make a key mind for Dampen Harm. But uh, if you're stuck in the middle of the map and you're not in stuns or you just left crowd control, you know, Expel Harm, big healing, really good. You know, you get in guaranteed healing. They might commit to some more stuns on you and DR you, which is fine. Um, but let's just say you don't have Zen Focus D. You have Dampen Harm, Diffuse Magic, or Fort Brew. I normally go with Fort Brew just because it lasts a long time too. It lasts 15 seconds. I don't think Dampen Harm lasts that long. I think it's, how long does Dampen Harm last? 10 seconds? And Diffuse Magic is like six, yeah. So the longest, you know, the longest duration is Fort Brew. If you haven't gotten stunned yet, I would recommend using Fort Brew just because there's a chance that they'll stun into it. You know, it's a 15 seconds. You can, what that means is you can either delay their go for 15 seconds or they just stun you while you have four per up. Because the name of the game when you're getting tunneled is you're stalling for your transcendence. That's all you're doing. That's how good this defensive is. You're just stalling. You're trying to buy time. Because look, look at this. I could, I could literally pour from pillar to pillar. It's amazing. You're just trying to buy time to your next port. So you're going to rotate your port. You know, you just ported, boom, boom. All right, so now they, they might stun you. So what I would do is I would fort brew. And now you're going to get stunned. Hopefully they stun into it because you have increased health and you have damage reduction, which is great. Cool. So what that means is that's another go where you don't have your port. Next go, you have your port. So now you have Diffuse Magic or Damage Harm. For, it's really Diffuse Magic or Damage Harm, it really depends on what you're queuing into. If you're queuing into, you know, melee damage, hard-hitting spells, arms, warriors, windwalker, monks... You're gonna press your dampen harm if you're queuing into you know frost death knights affliction warlock shadow priest you're gonna use your diffuse magic that's pretty much what it comes down to and then you have your healing elixirs so healing elixirs is great because again another instant heal and it costs no mana so you know there's not really a downside of healing elixir it instantly heals 15 percent of your max health so again while you're running around the pillar you can use your healing elixirs if you're getting, you know, trained or there's kicks available, you could use your healing, healing elixirs. Just try to weave them in throughout a match. Even if people aren't hitting you, I would use a healing elixir. You know, if you're healing your teammates, healing your teammates, you got, you got your little bonus proof, you're healing, you're using your velvet mist, you know, you all that. And you take, you're still taking a little bit of damage, you know, pop a healing elixir, throwing a little expel harm, renewing mist on yourself. Boom. Costs like no mana. And, and you're, and you're topped and you're fine. You don't get swapped to. So keep that in mind. And then. See, now we bought enough time to port. So now you port again. Boom. Port. That's all. That's the name of the game. Stall out until you can get port. Port again. That's your defensives. It's very difficult, though. Uh, kiting is very important. Positioning is very important on Miss Weaver. That's the frustrating. That's the part about Miss Weaver that people get frustrated with or, you know, think they aren't good for some reason. I mean, we're not the best, but, you know, Miss Weaver, you just got to know how to position, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I wish it was as easy as standing in the middle of the map and just being able to just, like, kick things or, like, do damage. It's not. You are, you know, 40 yards away. If you think people are trying to target you, you can't. You just make sure you run away. You know, get back. Just back off. And then just keep healing. Speaking of defensives, port placement. I have been talking about a video series I've wanted to do for a while. And I will get to it eventually. But I want to do a, a video, you know, series where I do port placement on every map. Port placement is very important. Very, very important. You lose if you make a mistake on Miss Weaver. And one mistake you can make is putting your port in the wrong spot. 90% of the time, you can just put your port right there. But now that we have, because now that we have Escape from Reality, what you could do is you could port, right? Boom, you could port, wait until people get to you, and then you could port again, and then roll across the map. So, just put your port behind a, uh, a pillar. 
just put it in the safest place possible LOS because you're playing against a warrior and you you put your port here and it's in line of them they're just going to charge you if you're playing against a rogue they're just going to shadow step you if you're playing against a death knight they're just going to death grip you if you're playing against a priest they're just going to silence stun you like every every class has some every class has so much mobility right now that like you you can't afford to make the mistake of porting in line you have to make sure it's LOS and then position it make sure when you're kiting you're kiting away from it but not too far away from it you know i i, I feel like you you kind of get a sense of how long your transcendence range is i feel like i should be able to i should i think as soon as i get behind this pillar i'll be out of range oh yeah see you you when you play mistweaver enough or monk enough you tend to know how far away your port is um and then from there you just kind of you know mess around with the range and make sure you always stay in range really good for avoiding cc as well not just getting trained uh, but keep that in mind. Do not outrange it. Always position it behind a pillar. Use the second charge to maybe cross the map, and you'll be fine. All right, so we have macros. I don't have too many macros, but I'll share every single one that I have. I have a slash use 13 and slash use 14. Uh, those are your trinkets, and that's so that I can put it on my bar and not have to keep dragging my trinket onto the bar. Um, I use arena 123 macros, so I'll show you my macros right here. Where, where are my macros right here? Um, where are they? They're right here. So these are mostly where all my macros are. Um, I have a bottom of frame script right here. Again, these are all in the description, by the way, in my Discord. So you can take them all. They're all yours. Uh, I have a drink macro. So this is the newest drink right here, right here. Uh, but I macro conjure mana buns, which is the mage water first, just because, you know, it's good. So... Right, that's my drink macro. That's nothing. This is nothing. This is a focus. Oh, no, no, no. That's nothing. Um, kick, focus, kick macro. So we just got a kickback. I, you know, I haven't had a kick for a long time. So I'm still, I'm still getting used to it now. But focus kick is pro is really important to have. Um, invoke Yulon. This is a known command. So they added the known keyword to macros. And what this does is if you switch between um, GG and you on this should work i hope <laughs> should work i was testing it there we go so it just swaps between them it's nothing crazy but i like having it just having the option that's there um and for oh taunt so again i'll talk about this in my tips and tricks part but uh taunting is really important for breaking cc on you i have a taunt infernal and then i have a taunt pet macro shadow meld oh this is this was from last expansion i gotta clean these out i got I've had these macros for so long. Very important. Party one, party two, dispel macro. So this dispels party one. This dispels party two. Really, those quick dispels, those DPS will love you. All right. If you're ever getting shit talked in solo shuffle, just make sure you got quick dispels. They'll forget instantly. I promise. <laughs> uh, paralysis, or not paralysis, orbs. So this is my orbs at cursor macro and a world marker because some people... For some reason, they, they can't see it. There's a lot going on. So this is uh, really good for uh, marking the healing spheres. Um, nothing crazy going on here. Uh, Tiger's Lust 1-2. So similar to the Dispel 1-2. I have a Tiger's Lust for it just because it's quick. You know, if I see a root on a teammate, I could just instantly Tiger's Lust them without having to target them. Really, really good. And yeah, that's pretty much it for these. What else are these? Um, so this is a help harm macro with Soothing Mist and and Tiger Palm. And then there's another one, I think, for Crackling Jade Lightning. Um, I'm not really a big fan of help harm macros. I don't really like them. If you do, you can take it. I just don't like them that much. Disarm 1, 2, 3, which is these three right here. Um, if I take Grapple Weapon, uh, it should show up. Boom. Those are my grapple weapon macros. Arena one two threes. Um, these are just scripts. Nothing going on here. Focus in cap. No, that's just healing sphere. Yeah, though that is pretty much it. Uh, oh no, this is I was in the wrong thing. This is the oh this is the one where it marks your location on transcendence. It puts a world marker on it. I got kind of annoyed by it, so I stopped using it. But um, really good to have for if you kind of lose your transcendence. At cursor macros, I'm huge with at cursors. I have one for ring piece, one for statue, and then I usually have one for bone disprove, but it keeps getting swapped every time I change that talent, so it's really annoying. But I would I do have one for bone disprove. And that's pretty oh 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 the most important macro. 
I say this every single guide. Where is it? If you don't use a single macro, that's fine. But use this one, please. This one right here, what this does is it saves you the embarrassment of life cocooning yourself when someone dies, okay? Or if they get mind controlled or something like that. What this does is this will not use life cocoon on anybody unless they're alive and you're, they're one of your teammates. So they need to be alive, they need to be your teammate, and they need to be able to be interact with your spells. So, you know, those times where the priest you know, mind controlled your teammate and you life cocoon yourself. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen anymore. Cause if I use press my life cocoon right now, ain't it ain't going off. It ain't going off. Okay. If I where, where's a is there a hordy out here? If I target a hordy, where are they? No, no, nah, dead. It's like seven a.m. Nothing. It's not gonna go off. If I target myself, boom, life cocoon's gonna go off. Okay. Keep that in mind. Please take this life cocoon macro this is just a bunch of toys as well so you don't need it <laughs> i just like having, using toys in arena um but yeah those are all my macros uh take them they're all yours i don't care you could do whatever you want with them if you have any macros yourself that you want to share with me please let me know i love i love macros i love tinkering with things so please share them i love them add-ons so uh, there aren't really too many add-ons especially when the add-ons break my ui half the time so i stopped using a lot of macros but I'll share my more, most important ones. Um, advanced interface options just gives you the ability to kind of mess around with a lot of things. This is what I use to like change, you know, add floating combat text to healing. Love it. Really good. You can go into CVAR browse and just look for almost anything you want in game, like, and just change it. It's crazy. I don't really mess around with it that much. I, I'm pretty simple when it comes to this stuff. So, um, but yeah, really good add on easy frames, which is this right here. It's, it's just simple, simple, just cosmetic, nothing crazy. Leatrix Plus, so this is a really good add-on for just messing around through your UI as well. This also puts the Silver Dragon around my my frame. Um, shows durability status, shows player chain. I don't even know what that is. Um, you could hide a bunch of things. You can, it's, it's really good automation. You can repair automatically because I always forget to repair. So just stuff like that, really cool. Set weather density, camera zoom. Just good to have add-ons that do this stuff. Omnibar, this is what tracks cooldowns. I have all of my add-ons in the description in my Discord. You could have all my add-ons, every single setting. I don't care. It's, they're all yours. Please take them, use them. Doesn't matter. Omni CD, track your teammate cooldowns. Very important, especially if you're a healer. I would highly recommend Omni CD. Quartz is just my cast bar. Nothing crazy. I just don't like the default or like before this expansion i just don't like the cast bar in general true free gcd is what shows my gcds down here helpful for you and me <coughs> this is by far one of the best ways if you're trying to improve at the game record your gameplay download this add-on watch your globals and you'll be surprised how poor <laughs> you uh use your globals trust me it's it's not pretty sometimes <laughs> mask is just for showing the green around my spells Again, just cosmetic battleground enemies, really good for uh, battlegrounds. Yeah, battlegrounds really good. S Arena is what I use for my arena frames. I've been using it for a very long time. I really like S Arena. Highly recommend it if you're trying to sign an add-on. Sexy map is just what makes this map look damn sexy. I don't know. Sexy map is just good. I don't really like the the map up here it's too big Ugh, they changed it i don't really like change nameplate auras so this is what makes it so you can put cc above somebody this is nameplate auras really good for leg sweep good for tracking your cc so highly recommend that i don't know how people don't use it more nameplate cooldowns is what shows the cooldowns underneath people's nameplates i really like it i don't really like to look down here uh, for cooldowns i like to look up in the arena match one add-on that is missing because it breaks my entire UI every time I enable it, and that's big debuffs. Big debuffs is essentially what shows big debuffs on people's raid frames or party frames. I wish it worked. It doesn't work. It doesn't want to work. I don't know why. It's really annoying. But um, I, once it starts working, I would highly recommend it. And those are pretty much all my add-ons. I don't really. I try not to use too many add-ons. I use. I have some battle pet add-ons. But no one, no one cares about battle pet add-ons. I do have some weak auras, but I kept getting it kept, um, it kept lagging me in RBGs, so I, I disabled it. But yeah, big debuffs is the only big one that I would, uh, I would recommend that I haven't talked about because it's it's so important, especially as a healer when you want to dispel fast. 
Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any add-ons or have any questions, let me know. But they're all yours in the description. Best comps to play are going to depend on how which specs are good. That's pretty much what it comes down to. What you want to play with is you want to play with specs that are tanky when you're in crowd control and then also help with your healing output because the tankier they are, the less healing you have to do, the more mana you have. And uh, that's nice to have. So I would say in twos, you want to stick with Feral Druids are really good. Assassination Rogues are insane. I play with the Demo Warlock. We crank. We're at like 2300 MMR. And we just, we just own people. So anything tanky, anything that keep themselves alive, especially in twos, really, really good. In threes, I think you want to stay with double caster or pick the two best melee. So I've been playing Shadow Priest Demo. Absolutely cracked. This the, the comp is ridiculous. So I play Shadow Priest Demo really good. I played Mage Demo or Mage Warlock, which is really, really good. Um, Ellie Warrior. Ellie Demo, those comps, those are your double caster comps. For a double melee, TSG, which is Warrior DK, and Turbo, which is Enhanced with Shaman Warrior. Both really good comps. Uh, Hero Cleave, which is DK, Demon Hunter, also very strong. Essentially, what you're trying to do is pick the two best melee that could do the most damage and play with them. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do when you're playing with a melee cleave. Um, and then, yeah, double casters is essentially the same thing. Two best casters, two tankiest ones, and play with them. And those are your best comps to play. All right, so I've never done this section before ever. So this is my first time. Bear with me. This is a tips and tricks section of the video where I'm just going to go run through some tips, tricks, some maybe some things that you didn't know about, about Mistweaver and interactions, kind of help you out, things that have helped me. First one is use provoke. I know it sounds weird. Provoke is a taunt. But what Provoke can do is it can break your CC, help you break CC. So like I mentioned in my macros, uh, part of the video, I could show you real quick. Here's this a taunt, it's Infernals. Actually, I don't need Kevin anymore. And what this ma uh, Provoke macro does is it taunts pets. And if you can get the, the timing right, you can taunt a Hunter pet to break your trap. So use your Provoke. It's also really good for just like taking damage off your DPS. I'll normally taunt almost as much as I can. I have I used to have it macroed into everything uh, until I raided and I taunted the boss and died. So uh, you could just macro it into, you know, something or, you know, make a keybind for it. Put that macro there and then taunt whenever you can. If you get kicked, you can still use some of your spells. This is really important for when you're being targeted. If you're if you're kicked, right? Oh no, I got kicked. You could still roll. You could still in cap. You could still leg sweep. So, and you could still fort brew. So keep that in mind. If you're getting targeted by like a warrior or something, you know, tigers off yourself and still run away. Oh no, he got to me. Let me roll away. You know, let me, let me roll away. And now all of a sudden my lockout's over and now you can port or something like that. So keep, again, keep that in mind. You, there's stuff you could do while you're kicked. And, and it, it, this also goes for like root beam as well from balance druids in case you didn't know if you get root beamed you can still paralysis so if the boomy is close enough to you and they're trying to cyclone off the root beam you could just in cap them I, there's so many boomies that don't seem to know that and you could catch them off guard with it it's really really handy you can disarm hunters to stop them from kicking you okay if you're playing against a hunter and you know let's just say you get playing against jungle or something and you're outranging the, the feral druid but the hunter has a kick available you could disarm the hunter and then just free cast. Hunters need their their weapon to kick. So as long as they're disarmed, you could free cast. I don't know if this is a bug. And we're not going to talk about it too, too much. But if you port, so you have two ports right now with Escape from Reality. If you port and you get kicked with this Escape from Reality buffed, you could still port while, you could port while kicked. I found that out in beta. And I don't know... If it's a bug or not, but I have used it quite a bit. So uh, keep that in mind. It's really, really good for when, you know, you just want to eat a kick, but you can still port. Diffuse magic can be used to stop canceling if it's a deep, if the channel has a debuff on you. So two really good examples. Drain soul from warlocks and disintegrate from evokers. They both have a channel on you that puts a debuff on you. If you use diffuse magic, it cancels the channel. So it's a nice little way to interrupt something, especially if you're taking damage. It just stops it instantly. Also, it, it helps with reducing a lot of damage because I know Warlocks have a lot of modifiers. And if you just cancel it, they, they lose a lot of damage. Same with the Disintegrate from Evokers. Uh, so keep that in mind. 
you know, I know it's niche, but there might be situations where you kind of want to cancel a drain soul or disintegrate and you have diffuse magic, press it. If you want to break someone's ankles around the map, what you could do with your double port is you could port, reset your port, roll away. And if they try to get back to you, port again, they will, they will have no idea what just happened. They will have no freaking clue what just happened. And I love it. So just do it. You always want to kind of mess around when it comes to your port, you know, always make them, you know, guess where your port is. Always move around your port around the map. And, uh, that's one of the best ways where you could do it. The order of your crowd control matters when there's kicks available. So what you want to do is you want to go for an in cap song of Chi If you get kicked, you could just leg sweep and then you can go for a song of Chi after very good versus shaman or like anyone that has a short kick um, duration, very handy versus, um, you know, hunters, shamans, stuff like that, because you get, you get, get, you get kicked, but you still get the crowd control. So there's no downside. It's really, really nice. And that is pretty much it for the tips and tricks and guide itself. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I don't know how long this video is or was. And if you're still watching this, I appreciate you. But that is pretty much all I got. Again, I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. I hope I didn't miss anything. I talk a lot in these videos. This is like the one video where I just let myself just pop off with with talking because I, I can talk about Miss Weaver all day and most videos I can't talk that much because then you know the video is like 20 minutes long and it's supposed to be a 10 minute long video so yeah again any questions let me know I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have hope everyone's enjoying Miss Weaver Miss Weaver is a lot of fun and that is pretty much it for me hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you later